Yeah, so I mean, I've seen a whole lot of gospel musicians overuse this chord. They, they use the diminished chord for everything. So if they're trying to approach like a D minor, they'll have the, right? Or if, I, if they don't, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. They'll use the diminished there. Oh my soul. And there's nothing wrong with it, but they overuse it. So overuse of the chord and over-reliance of the chord could make it sound like you don't have a lot of options and a lot of things to do. So that's the reason why sometimes you say, well, you know, I want more, I want more chord choice. I want more options. And this is the kind of option that I wanted to use today. Uh, I call it, I call it the inverted dominant chord. It's just a dominant chord, but it's inverted and it will really update the way that you can approach different chords. Actually, Richard Small would address this in his song. Because in total praise, he said, um, Lord, I will lift mine eyes to the hills, right? And and what do we do? We go to our go-to chord. We go to our diminished chord here, right? So Richard Smallwood was the first one who, who, who really, I think, popularized this for gospel musicians using the inverted dominant because he says, I don't want those as Bs, I want those as B flats, which changes this to a B flat dominant chord. Now, the easy way to see, I wanna update how we look at dominant chords. Dominant chords are nothing but triads. Look at the B flat triad here, right? And if we add the seventh note and we make it flat, the way to play the inverted dominant is simply to take the seventh note, it will always be in the bottom. And then the root note will always be in the top. So it'll sound like that, right? Um, now in Richard Smallwood's, he, he, this is the idea, it was inverted. Now the way I'm gonna teach it is like, this is gonna make it really easy, right? So it's not hills, right? It's, it's hills. But the way I'm teaching it, we're gonna have the A flat on the bottom. And I'm gonna show you how many different places you can use this. Because a lot of us, we, we um, overuse this for instance <laughs> yeah uh, i showed you i will bless the lord how about i do um well let's just do let's let me show you total praise okay here we go Okay, now we have that dominant chord here. I have a dominant chord. Now watch this. Here it is again. I'm gonna do it again. And then I'm gonna go to knowing. Right. So these are updated chords and they're not diminished. And they sound really good. That one I went, that was a B. See, if you look at, unpack this chord, look at, what's, look at what's happening here. I took, this is F sharp. This is actually just a B chord. And I went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, and I made that flat. I have that at the bottom. Sorry, I have the A at the bottom and the F sharp is here. Okay, so I wanna, I wanna show you where, now, where would we use this? Um, the best place to use something like this would be slash chords, what I call slash chords. Um, so let me give you what a slash chord is. It's just simply a major chord. And at the bottom of the major chord in your left hand, you play any other note except the root. <laughs> so you can have a C sharp at the bottom or you can have an E at the bottom. Let's use the C sharp. So this is where you would use your inverted dominant chord. And what you wanna do is you wanna approach the C sharp from a half step above it. So you approach it from here. So what dominant chord, the question is what dominant chord would have D as its seventh, as its flat seventh note? it would be E. So this means I'm gonna be playing an E tritone on the left hand. So, so let's see, let's see it in a song. Uh, let's do Here I Am to Worship. All right, so. Here I am 
to bow. So this is a perfect example because bow down is just a simple triad with a C sharp in the left hand. And so this is where you can have the inverted dominant. I'll put it right before I play this one. Mm, I love that. And this is my inverted dominant. It sounds good. And because this is where I had an E, I just simply played an E triad. And I played this in the bass. Let me see if there's another place I can. Yeah, no. All right, let me try another one. So let's do Oh Lord, How Excellent. Um, so, how excellent. Uh-oh, that's a perfect place to put it because I'm playing a major chord. I always use it with either major or minor. But on the bottom, I don't have a B flat. I have another note within the chord, which is the D, which means I need to approach this from a half step above. What chord, what triad uses E flat as the seventh note? So it would be an F chord. And the neat thing is that since you know that it's an F chord, you can play the F chord in any inversion. So I'm going to play an F chord in an E flat in the bass in, or in order to lead to how excellent. So here's how it'll sound. See, and that gives you some another sound, right? Because the diminish won't sound as good. See? Right? Um, let's say after we do, um, after we do, um, oh Lord, how excellent, and then how about I add a slash chord here, and then. So, so right here, how excellent, a lot of people go, right? So, so I want to use it there, right there, right? So let me um, put my computer on do not disturb. So, so how excellent, I went to a C chord here, well then I would need to approach this from a half step up. That's going to be an F. And what triad dominant chord has an F as the last, the top note? So I need to play a G chord. Just a G chord and an F. Really simple. So how's it sound? Um. Just a G chord and an F, and it's gonna that F is gonna be in the bass. It's just another thing to do, and it sounds good. I could use diminished there. <laughs> See, so. Sounds really good, so <laughs> I like that. I really like the sound of that dominant uh, and how it moves there. I'm gonna do one more for you, and then I wanna show you an exercise that you can do. Uh, um, probably tomorrow, I'm gonna have an exercise for you that I use to do this real easily um, so that you can always remember these. Anyway, and, I, and I'll show you, you know, what the exercise is and we'll, we'll work it with you so you can get these and pull them off really easily when you're playing. Let's look at, um, what's the song I want to do? Um, this, uh, 
I will bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Right? Um, bless his whole. And then, oh yeah, right, right. So, um, bless his whole. Here it is again, an A flat chord. I got. I'm gonna be moving to an A flat chord over a C. So, based on the rules I taught you, how would you find out what chord to play before you play this? Now, someone's gonna say. Now, while you're, while y'all are thinking about that, someone's gonna say, "Well, where are you putting the chord?" It's gonna be. Um, Right? And, and a lot of people would use diminished there. So they would go. Right? So, but what I want to do is instead of using a diminished chord, we're going to use the one I, we just showed you, the inverted dominant. Okay, so what would the chord be? Hopefully you guessed it, we'd be playing an E flat. And this is the reason why on my course, I have an entire course with just us going over dominance. Like, <laughs> I mean, I drill it into um, the members because I want to make sure that they've memorized dominance. Because if, if you've memorized your dominant chords, this is going to be a piece of cake, right? Dominant chords are used so much. So that's why I want everybody to make sure that you understand them. And we drill those through. So check, the, check out the uh, membership site. You can see that we have an entire course on dominance and i actually do some exercises with you so, so you can memorize them um, but for the inverted dominant here you know so I'm, I'm, I'm approaching this a flat from an e flat with the d flat on the bottom which is a dominant chord as i call it inverted dominant because the top notes at the bottom okay and and you can play this E flat chord however you want to play it. So let's let's look at the, how that sounds. Actually, let's go into it. Let's go from the beginning. Now check this out. Check this out. I want to show you something with this. Y'all see this dominant chord right here? Because I'm about to go. Oh my soul, right? So if I'm doing, I will bless the Lord, this, this diminished chord is being used to transition to the next chord. Because the bass note is moving up half steps, right? Oh my soul. But this is another place you could use it. And instead of using a diminished, like I said, you use your inverted. Well, this one is a slightly different, but you, I could use a dominant here. So check this out. <laughs> See that? It's a little different sound. I'm getting to that last part. <laughs> See? Let's do it again. Diminished. Dominant. <laughs> diminished and dominant together. D diminished, inverted dominant to the major. So I, I really like this, and um, I want you to go and try to practice this. And like I said, look at a look at a video tomorrow from me. Um, just be looking out for one where I'm gonna I'm going to show you an exercise that I use. Uh, it's going to be really short, 
but you can kind of play with me and get these really quickly. You can throw these in any song. <laughs> there's just, there's no song that I could play right now where I cannot put this. Like I could just, it's, it's, it can, it can be used in so many different songs. So it's really cool. So um, go ahead and use that inverted dominant chords. <laughs> so stop overusing the diminished and uh, start using this one and you'll find a lot of variety in your playing. Thanks again for watching. I'm Sean Wilson. We'll talk to you later.